This is really good for us. Unless they have a counter spell. Do. But we have a miscast on top of their neutralize. It does save us. Yes! They don't have enough mana. And it still hits. We take odds. We keep Narset down from an ultimate. We just got a giant off the top, I think. Bone Crusher. Two cards in hand. Hey everybody, welcome back and thanks so much for taking the time to watch Hello Good Game. Whether this is your first video or you've been on the journey now for a while, I appreciate every second that you spend out of your day here with me today. We're playing Demir Fortel, the hidden synergies between Cosmos Charger and the one and only Dream Devourer is pretty cool. So, you know, it makes all of our cards able to foretell and not only on our turn, but our opponent's turn as well, which is nice because then we could be holding up our mana for counter spells and, you know, general removal shenanigans. And then if we don't need to do that, now we can foretell some cards, make them cheaper for later. And this is really, really cool for control decks. I feel like foretell is better in control decks than anywhere else. Again, let me know your thoughts and opinions on everything in the comments below as you watch the video. Thank you again for your time and attention. We're going to break down the deck list, show you guys all the cards that are in there, and then break down the strategies and synergies. How do they all come together to form a coherent archetype that you can compete and climb up the ranked ladder with? Today, we literally blaze through Platinum, uh, into Platinum 1 now, headed to Diamond uh, like a hot knife through butter. Uh, this deck is absolutely amazing. I don't know if it's because the early meta is still kind of mixed up or we stumbled upon uh, yet another genius brew. What? I don't know, you guys. Thanks again. You know, just general shenanigans. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share the channels to your friend. Don't miss out on our 500,000 gem giveaway. 100 one-on-one -on -one sessions with myself that you can also win. Free cash prize monthly tournaments. Brawl and Artisan take place in those or take part in those, I should say. And yeah, let's get into it. Make sure to download Magic the Gathering Arena Assistant if you haven't already in the link tree link in the description below. Everything you need as far as metagame analysis. You can even use the deck advisor to see which deck you should play based on your current collection. Cool stuff there, you guys. Thanks for watching. Demir Fortel, the hidden synergies between Cosmos Charger, a 3-3 with Flash and Flying. Foretelling cards from your hand costs one less and can be, can be done on any player's turn. This is really, really nice. And uh, the one less is a stackable thing. If we get two Cosmos Chargers in play, we can foretell cards for free. Yeah, we can. That's pretty cool. Really, really nice. And of course, it itself has foretell for three. So we pay two. It goes in exile face down. And then we can put it into play a little later on for three. And then we do have the Dream Devourer as well. A 3 and each non-land card in your hand without foretell has foretell. Its foretell cost is equal to its mana reduced by two. And whenever you foretell a card, Dream Devourer gets plus two, plus zero until the end of turn. That's uh, absolutely amazing. Is anybody's ADHD freaking out over this line here? Like flickering in and out? That is driving me up the wall. Anyways... You can uh, have this. It's a pretty good defender. And when you're foretelling things, it makes them cheaper to cast later, which is really nice, especially in a control deck. Plus, you know, you can actually go on the offensive with it if you want as well. Uh, hitting for two damage a turn isn't a lot, but it can add up over time. So Dream Devourer is one of the key components to the deck alongside Cosmos Charger. Breaking down some of the other new cards we have in the deck, Graven Lore for five snow instant scry x where x is the amount of snow spent to cast this spell then draw three cards if we foretell this with the devourer that takes place for three so we can scry three and we can draw three cards uh very 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 good of course we can scry five and draw three cards as well if we are casting it uh, from our hand regularly but i really do find that the foretell Cost reduction is well worth your while as a control deck, and you should basically do it on everything. So Graven Lore is a new spell within the deck that really helps us replenish our hand, and, um, you know, it's just, it's good. The Scry 3, or Scry 5, potentially draw 3, will get you the answer you need. Better yet, 
Uh, most of the spells that we are foretelling, when we do cast them from foretell, will trigger Shark Typhoon at their original CMC cost, not the foretell CMC cost, which is pretty cool, of course. So, you know, when you do have something like Graven Lore uh, foretold and then you cast it for three, it will actually make a 5-5 five, five Shark on Shark Typhoon, which, if you're unfamiliar, is a 6 CMC enchantment. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create an XX blue shark creature token with flying, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. Cycling for 2 plus X, which is quite nice, so you know you can uh, make a, a shark as big as you want. And of course, uh, you know whenever you shark, cycle Shark Typhoon, create an XX blue shark creature token with flying. So this is nice, uh, both if we know we're safe to hardcast it, and then even more so if we can cycle it as uh, just an XX shark with flying, which is really nice. So we see new things uh, like Binding of the Titans brought in, destroyed, you know, anything, <laughs> LOL. Uh, we have Brazen Boar or Petty Theft, there's Bounce Spell. So you're spending six mana. You need to make sure that it's safe, that your opponent doesn't have anything uh, to affect you uh, by removing it. And if not, you can just cycle it as a shark. That's great. Uh, the one way we can, you know, look and see if our opponent has an answer before we hardcast our Shark Typhoon is Elspeth's Nightmare. This is a Saga for three. Destroy target creature and opponent controls with power two or less, which is just general removal. Always nice. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it. That player discards that card. So, you know, a Petty Theft could still get you through the Brazen Borrower, but now you know if they have it, right? You know if they have an answer you get the green light or the red light for your Shark Typhoon a lot of the times through Elspeth's Nightmare. It's also, you know, just great to take out Genesis Ultimatums, take out Ugans. Uh, lots of the times I'll play the Nightmare, even if it doesn't have a target, uh, because there are many decks where there are no creatures. So, you know, the Nightmare's still good just to hard cast for that last ability. And, you know, Exiling the Graveyard's not always bad either. Moving on, we'll switch back now to some of the new cards. We have two copies of Poison the Cup. A 3 CMC instant, destroy target creature. If this spell was foretold, scry 2. Foretell for 2. So, uh, you know, instant speed, destroy target creature, plus scry 2 for 2. Isn't bad. It's not amazing. But, uh, you know, it's still very, very good. And then we have a single copy of Cosmia, God of the Voyage, and the Omen Neal. The God is a 2-4. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you may exile Cosmia. If you do, it gains whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control. If Cosmia is exiled, you may put a Voyage counter on it. If you don't, return it to the battlefield with an XX uh, counter for each Voyage counter. And draw X cards uh, equal to that as well. Which is really nice. So, you know, you can get this in early game. You can push it to Foretell with the Devourer and cast it for 1. Which is really, 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 really nice. And then, of course, you know, it goes into exile if it survives the turn. And you just stack voyage counters on it. You draw it when it gets to seven. Full hand. Now you've got your uh, win con, right? We'll call this win con A. Uh, Cosmia, God of the Voyage. We do have the Omen Neal. We don't really cast that here. Uh, you know, we can push up the Devourer with a Fortel and then crew uh, the Devourer into the Omen Neal if you want. It feels really awkward in the deck. Uh, but it's still there. It's a 3-3. Three, three, and whenever a Creel, you could... A vehicle you control deals combat damage to a player. That player exiles that many cards from the top of the library. You may play cards from among those uh, cards as long as they remain exiled. Uh, land cards, that is, of course. Only land cards. Um, so this is fine, you know, but it's not great in the deck. And I actually don't really focus on it at all. I just focus on the God of the Voyage, get it in exile, and start putting Voyage counters on it so you can get a big creature later and draw those cards. Any other new cards here? I do not think so. Of course, we have uh, the, the snow in there for Graven Lore. Uh, getting into some of the other cards to fill the void. We're talking about Soul Shatter. This works very well within the deck. It's an instant speed for three. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker with the highest converted mana cost among creatures and planeswalkers they control. Maya, settle down, girl. We're trying to do a deck tech. <laughs> this is amazing because with Dream Devourer, we can put it into Fortel. It's an instant speed, so we can have our opponent sacrifice their highest converted creature or planeswalker, Threat Dealer, uh, at one mana for instant speed. Like, that's really, really good. The same thing goes with Whirlwind of Denial, uh, or Whirlwind Denial. Three mana, instant speed. For each spell and ability your opponent's control, counter it unless this controller pays four. You know, shutting down stacks of spells is absolutely amazing in, you know, those weird control matchups. And better yet, for something like Scoot Swarm, for example. That can shut down the Scoot Swarm stack. Better than all of those things, though, 
you can foretell it for two and cast it for one at instant speed. That's absolutely amazing. We have two copies of the Midnight Clock. Three mana, it taps to add a mana as soon as it comes into play, which is nice. We can also sink three mana into it uh, as many times as we can to put an hour counter on it. And then at each player's upkeep, an hour counter goes on it as well. When there's 12 counters, you exile it, shuffle your hand and your graveyard into your library, draw seven. This is really nice. It counters the remaining mill meta. It also allows you to replenish your hand, uh, basically free of charge while ramping. So, you know, a lot of really cool things that the Midnight Clock allows us to do. We talked about Elspeth's Nightmare already. Let's get into Eliminate. Only two copies of this because, you know, it doesn't really benefit so much from the foretelling because it's just a 2 CMC anyways. However, Crawling Barons does exist. It's not the highest converted mana cost they have and we cannot counter it. So we need Eliminate to deal with opposing Crawling Barons and, you know, it can pick up some other things along the way as well. Instant Speed for two, destroy target creature or Planeswalker with converted mana cost three or less. Two copies of Miscast at instant speed, counter target instant or sorcery spell unless its controller pays three. This is really nice because right now we have Tabal's Trickery floating around, you know, it's around too much, I would say, and it stops it in its tracks. It basically makes them going from mulliganing, 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 oh yeah, I got it, to here's a miscast, just concede, go away, do something else, lol. With that uh, out of the way, you know, you can cancel out uh, other shenanigans. The saddest story is that it doesn't hit enchantments, right? Elspeth Conquers Death, for example, is something that you really want to stop. Um, and Planeswalkers as well, for that sake. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't hit everything, but it can save you. It can 100% save you uh, from many, many things. So, Miscast is pretty cool. It shuts down, you know, some aggressive things, and it can even help you defensively. Uh, so, we have... Finally, Ugin. I know you guys don't want to see it, but a 7 loyalty Planeswalker plus 2, 3 damage to any target. Minus X, exiling each permanent with converted mana cost X or less. That's one or more color. And then minus 10, gain 7 life, draw 7 cards, put 7 permanents into play, uh, which is amazing. So, you know, Ugin's just busted. This is your late game win con, and alongside him, we have something a little bit more fun. Ashok, Nightmare Muse. 5 loyalty plus 1 to create a 2-3 that has whenever this creature attacks or blocks, each opponent exiles the top 2 cards of their library. Minus 3, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, then that player exiles a card from their hand, that's great. Especially if you use it on a token, because the token can't go to their hand, it just dies, and then they still have to eat something from their hand, so it's like you get a 2 for 1 special. And of course, minus 7, you may cast 3 spells from among face-up cards your opponents own from exile without paying their mana costs. Uh, face up, which is pretty cool. It's just become relevant because, you know, uh, face down cards are things from Fortel. So those are, you know, those late game smashers and we play them on top of the Shark Typhoon, hopefully. Two Castle Vantresses, tap for five, scry two, seven Snow Islands, one Castle Lockthwin, tap for four, draw a card, lose life equal to the cards in your hand. Five Snow Swamps, uh, it should be six. We have a regular in here. I don't know why. Doesn't matter really that much. Two Clearwater Pathways, Temple of the Sea, two Crawling Barons. We can pump it by plus two plus two make it a creature if we want for four mana easy peasy lemon squeezy let's fix this land we'll just add another clear water pathway for consistency's sake and you don't have to worry about it so that's the deck list and you know we did break down a lot of these synergies and strategies uh throughout that process but you know to really break it down for you guys in depth as a control deck and specifically as this control deck your main objective is to outlast your opponent you don't need to deal any damage to them. Zero damage. The only time you start dealing damage to your opponent, unless it's free damage and you have to take it or else you're leaving it on the table, is, you know, when they have no cards in hand. They're top decking. That's when you start to deal damage and close out the match. Other than that, it's just control, 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 remove, 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 counter, 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 right? Uh, and then the way that we are able to achieve this most effectively is by gaining uh, card advantage. Uh, so we don't want to have an empty hand when they have an empty hand. This means that we can't go one for one or else both of our hands will drain together. We need to be utilizing two for ones and, you know, gaining any value that we can find. Um, and this is actually pretty easy to do in the deck. There's lots of draws. Uh, one of the ways that control decks most commonly do this is by running on the cat wheel. <laughs> no, it's, uh... So you kind of let your opponent play multiple spells. And when we're playing best of one, which we are today, 
I like to see a creature deck, right? And I will prioritize my draw hands based on the amount of aggro decks that I'm seeing at that time, right? So I play, you know, it's like there's not a lot of aggro. I don't need field wipes. There is a lot of aggro. I'm always trying to find, you know, my extinction event, for example, to wipe the field. And I'm not sure if we talked about that, but extinction event for four at sorcery speed. Choose odd or even XL each creature with converted mana cost of the chosen value. You know, this takes care of those creatures. It takes care of indestructible, right? The only downside is that it's odd or even. This leads us to first identify which deck that we're playing against, right? Uh, so we know if we need the removal and we know what kind of removal we need. So typically I try to always have an extinction event in my hand when I start. If not, I'm always looking for it until I identify that my opponent is not an aggro deck. Because if they're a mid-range deck, if they're a control deck, a combo deck, you're going to have a few more turns to survive and, you know, really get things uh, situated, right? Find the correct spells. Uh, but if it's an aggro deck and you don't have your wipe, game over, right? So that's why I'm always looking for it. Uh, and then again, with that out of the way, your general strategy, make the game last as long as you can. Get all of their cards out of their hand by taking two for ones, right? Having two, three creatures in play and then using the extinction event. One card for two to three cards, right? That's going to get you that value. Keep those cards in your hand. Uh, furthermore, you can hold up your mana. You can use instant speed removal, instant speed counters. If they don't play anything, that allows you to now draw cards with that mana, right? Because they're scared. They don't want their stuff removed. They're going to try to wait it out. And now you just draw more cards, compound the situation, make it even worse, gaining, you know, positive card advantage. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. This is done through things like Graven Lore. It's done through things like Midnight Clock. Other than that, it's just control. Remove, 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 which just, you know, brings us back full circle into survival, you know, making the game last as long as we can, taking two for ones. It's the same story, you guys. It's really easy. Start to, you know, cement this in your brains as how a control deck plays and how you win with a control deck because to really understand the archetypes in depth will allow you to play the different deck lists, you know, seamlessly, right? You know how every control deck basically plays. So, with that out of the way, once you do have control, once they're out of cards, now you can lace in your Shark Typhoons. You can put, you know, Ashiok, Ugin uh, out there in attack mode. You can bring Cosmia back into play to deal that damage. Easy peasy, Lemon Squeezy. You also have the Cosmos Charger as well. Crawling Barons uh, is your last ditch effort. And, you know, even if they remove everything as well, you're still probably going to have that Crawling Barons. And remember, your Eliminate is for theirs. And it's, uh, it's just a fun time. We had, what, 70? 7% win rate or something today uh, cutting through platinum uh, easy peasy lemon squeezy if you guys need any help with the deck reach out in the comments below uh, myself and the community as a whole will help you if you have any troubles any concerns any questions you know the deal uh, we'll get you we got you and with that out of the way thank you for your time and attention make sure to like comment subscribe share the channel to your friends and communities download magic the gathering arena assistant in the uh, link tree link in the description below Use the deck advisor, you know, if you're a free-to-play player looking for decks to use uh, based on your current collection. You know, it's got so many more features into it. I've done videos on it if you want. And uh, 500,000 gem giveaway, 100 one-on-one -on -one sessions with myself, free cash price monthly tournaments. And, you know, just a blossoming community that's been a lot of fun to be in. Uh, jump in the Discord, support financially to gain VIP chat access and, you know, exclusive content. Uh, you can do so on Twitch, Patreon, YouTube, or even by purchasing things through our Amazon link. Thank you guys so much again one more time before we get into today's gameplay footage. I hope you all have a wonderful viewing experience and a magical day. Take care, and we'll see you soon to wrap up. Well, first match, our opponent goes first with three lands with a Devourer. Let's pray for some nice, easy matchups today, right? I gotta hit Diamond, you guys. I'm feeling a little bit... Uh... Like a slacker. Might have to play some OT games here at night or something. <laughs> Let's see how it pans out for us. Oh no.
We get hit for two soul shatter, instant speed. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker of the highest converted mana cost among creatures and planeswalkers they control for one mana. Gulp. <laughs> I feel like there's not a lot of creatures. Let's take our two damage. I mean, this is obviously an ultimatum deck, right? Gulp <laughs> on our own end. We have a Whirlwind Denial we can pull. We may need more classical counter spells. Never mind. It's exactly what we thought it was. Hey, they can cast a crypt. Good game. Get out of here. Oh, play! <laughs> That's for you guys. I know you don't like playing against it. Right? It's going to be banned in best of one. It'll be viable in best of three, I bet. But... Urgh. Two land is not enough in a control deck. At least we can be reducing the cost of things. Tossing our whirlwind for now. You know, if it's creature deck, we just remove the stuff, right? And then, like, so right now we're identifying whether or not we need the counterspell. I'd say no, it's a removal-based matchup. Nice. Hit for three. Gulp. Let's just foretell our event so we can cast it for sure. I mean, they have odds and evens though, so it's You're not going to do it on itself. Ouch. We're just dead. Mono White is too fast. Unless we grab a land off the top and then we grab another extinction event. I don't know. Maya's in the house. It's always more entertaining than the match, right? <laughs> Get him, Maya. Go for it, girl. Get your run in. Luminar Gasperance pushing everything in sight up. We're going to get hit for a bunch. <sighs> hit for nine. That's really aggressive for a mono white deck. Right? Three three threes plus a skyclave for flying. Yeah, that's just a good game. Wow. That's looking very nice. Going first with three land, a clock or two. Which we don't really need two of, but I will take it. Playing against Yorion, so we're in for a battle here, that's for sure.
Raven Lord is really good. We'll cast that later, though. My is still in studio. Going for her runs. Birth of Melitus in play. Gotta love that. Right? Let's foretell that for now. It's like she can sense that she's being filmed. <laughs> the scry, the land's good, especially the uh the Vantress there. There are Yorion's in hand. Which kind of signifies to me they don't have much. We kind of want to space our clocks out as well. We want to drop this clock as late as we can to the next one. Let's pass our turn. We're sitting on five available mana. Omen in play, that's fine. Well, I mean, it's not fine, but it's happening. <laughs> that's their fifth land. That's their whole turn, though. Right. Let's pass our turn again. You know, clock's already at five. Ooh, major ear pain. We'll be okay, though. We'll live. Oh, hear this kid's voice. That's why I'm good at streaming. Is I can't typically uh, hear my own voice. Let's get uh, Cosmia out of play here. Let's flash our charger in. Let's take our hit. We might not want to use the clock, right? If we need to pull a counter spell with the lore, then we don't want to use the clock. So we'll just wait, and we can foretell it, right? Oh, we can't foretell it. We need the Devourer to foretell it. We need both of them. But we still have our Graven Lore, which is fine. Bridge Charming can enter. You know, we're just looking for, like, uh, some field control and more counter spells. Because we know there's more Yorion, right? So maybe we can even get to an Ugin. I'm worried most about their Elspeth Conqueror's deaths, I think.
Let's try to find it. No way. That's all their mana. <laughs> right? They're trying to kill our clock. Ashok in play. Listen to my whispers and sing a horrid hymn. The minus might have been good there, force a discard, right? We could have minused on a token, but then, you know, they're going to kill it with the prince for sure. But this way, you know, there's a chance for it to survive. They have to remove the token, which draws the card out of their hand anyways. Another Yorion. Uh, golly. Bye, uh, golly. That's an odd. We're all evens. They just don't want to sit here against us. It makes me feel bad, but, you know, that's a choice that you have to think about for a second. That's not, like, do you counter this Yorion? There's Omen of the Suns, there's Omen of the Sea, there's Prince Charming. Or do we wait, you know, and make sure that we just kind of try to protect everything? But regardless, we'll take the win. Our opponent's going first. I mean, that's nice, but there's not a single swamp there. This is much better, I think. A little bit of removal. No field wipe, which sucks. And an Ugin in hand, which isn't actually good at all. But let's try to work our way through it. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share the channel to all of your friends. And I guess we actually just toss Ugin. Let's get after it. Bump and play. We get our field wipe. We have our fourth land. Rakdos is kind of gross though, so are they going to discard cards from us here? What's going on? Yo. Bye bye clock. We'll keep our unseen cards until last. Try to confuse them again. Er we need to discard their graveyard. All of this works really good against them, I think. Well, take three damage. I'm happy just to chill. Unless they remorse our nightmare, that would suck, but I doubt it. I have two in their opening hand is, you know, it's not like there's a shuffling algorithm or anything. If I had time, I've got a meme video I want to make, but unfortunately, I'm so busy. Baron's in play. Pass our turn. You know, we could obviously not attack with it, but we can put the counters on it. Which is always good. We've got lots of removal. Let's get into that hand, I guess. Right? We're getting rid of their Kroxa. We're getting into their hand. We don't get the kill, but we have removal. So it's not like we need to just sit on it. Ouch. That clock's really good for us. The Eliminate kills our Crawling Barons. So we take that. Clock in play. That's really good for us. Um, there's no targets for anything. 
right? So they're not going to get Croxa out unless they have a some one CMC spell. No. Clock goes up. Croxa has gone from grave. Which is good for us. Right on time, right? Let's pass our turn. Well, I guess we could have played the temple. I don't want to miss the scry. That scry is really important to me. So I'm just going to sit on the land here for a second. Okay. Why does it hide their whole hand on us again? That's something that I don't think people know, that the Dream Devourer can rehide your whole hand. Okay. They don't attack into the Barons, so we'd use Graven Lore. Um, this is fine. Right, we need both of those cards. And then, you know, of course, getting back into their hands really good. And three land we should probably hold up because that's a counterspell, right? And that's good to have. <laughs> and our turn here. Midnight clock's up to five. Dudicus, three cards in hand. We just counter it. It's like discarding one card rather than two. I mean, it does get our counter spell out, but whatever. Let's see their hand. Again, these mean nothing. Uh, this can kill. Our planeswalker, so let's get rid of it. Pathway can go. Let's foretell this. And we can cast it if they play anything. Scry 2. We also have Soul Shatter if it's a planeswalker. As soon as Midnight Cloak goes off, we're going to be okay. We also have Barons. All right, so they get a soul shatter. Good game. This is working out uh, pretty nicely, in all honesty. Going first, three land in hand, plus our combo with our jank spice. Yup. Let's pray for our long match so we can kind of play with some of this. Uh, let's do an island. You know, it could be miscast, Mr. Tibalt player. They need to learn to be scared of islands, as they should be. <laughs> right? Through one, which is hard for us, actually. But, Cosmia itself. Well, that's annoying. Let's try to get that long con draw engine going. It needs to survive, though. They just used their casket. Do they have another? There's lots of exile that gets it at 2 and 3, but... The nice thing about the caskets is I can remove them later. Right, we have Ugin. Um, right, minus three on Asha. I can bring it back for a second. And 
Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I don't really care. I'm gonna counter your Dorian. Oh well. Flashing our charger in here and then protecting it while we ramp into Ugin. Scry two to the top. That must be nice. Charger's in. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, do not read your cards out of your hand. <laughs> read them in your hand. We could have countered that. Oh my lord. Read your cards in your own hand. Just zoom in on them. Don't pull them out like me. I'm used to doing it because typically they won't cast, right? If there's no target. But Whirlwind just clears the stack. And if there's no stack, it just... Don't drag and drop your Whirlwind Denial. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> right, so typically if we drag Ugin around to, to look at him and read it, uh, and we can't cast it, that's fine. And typically with your counter spells, you can't do that either because there's no target. But Whirlwind Denial doesn't need to target. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And I like, I always am like, kind of like dragging things around and looking at them. Oh no. The more you know, right? I mean, that's an easy destroy probably, right? How much do they care about damage? I get to see their hand. Wow. Okay, I would way rather see their hand. Unless they don't have a single thing for us to take. Wow. Okay, they've got some good stuff here. Let's pass our turn. Do we scry or just start taking the draws? I think we just start taking the draws. 18 life. It looks like they're a control variant. I'm worried about that other binding. I'm worried about Fey of Wishes. They throw their other binding out, which is really, really good for us. Because they don't want to lose their graveyard. Awkward. Or they're just really looking to ramp is the thing. Minus four. Clears their field. We get our two creatures back. Here comes the Doom Scar. We need to pull a counter spell for whatever that Fey grabs. That's okay though. Land and play. A miscast. Interesting. The plot thickens. Let's take the scry. Shark Typhoon's godlike. Plus on the chinny chin of Nahiri. Sir Mucky of Karik. Ghost fire. My greatest creation. So this costs four. That takes us down to four. We can cycle that all ends in speed. Let's leave it there. End our turn. Take the draw.
They have a Skyclave to bring back. Do we cycle the shark for two? Probably not. That's all their mana for the turn. Miscast is not doing anything here because it's our go. It should do it. Right, that whirlwind denial on top of the shark typhoon is going to send that fey to the grave. Oh no. We have to miscast it now instead. And they got another Elspeth Conquers Death. I was not expecting that. Pass our turn. We have five available mana. Clock should save us. I mean, they also have that Fey, which we 100% need to counter. And we should have kept that clock in our freaking hand. What was I doing? Oh, that's that hurts. That feels bad. That feels so bad. And if I counter this Fey, they can bring it back and then discard cards. But that's our only option. Yikes. I was not expecting back-to-back -back Elspeths. That's so good for them. We should have cycled the shark and dominated them. As you always should. Let's take them down to 10. End our turn. We still can use our Whirlwind. <clears throat> yeah, they can have it. Even if we just protect our Crawling Barons at this point with our Whirlwind. Discarding two cards to bounce it. Nice. That's really, really good for us. Highlight our Crawling Barons like it's our only option. Take the damage. This is a Sorcery Speed spell. They don't have black mana open for Eliminate. Let's take a Scry instead, then. The event can go... Down to four. They just cast it as a creature? Oh no, granted cost four. What was I thinking? So two mana. And only Jezkai colors. We'll get our clock back when we kill the apparition. And we have a massive draw. 
Nice. That's a seven drop. Do they have the land for it? Or they're just like banking on it? If we can pull out removal, we win. <laughs> oh, hot dog! Hot dog! Crawling Baron's OP. And we had Graven Lore to refill everything as well, which is nice. That's awesome. Going first is great. Uh, that allows us to scry and hold up miscast next turn, probably. We'll hold on to the land, just build to five. There we go. My hat's on crooked today because my headphones. More counter spells aren't bad. Especially when we cast them for one. Okay, they're just foretelling. I guess we're safe to play the Devourer right now because we have a miscast. So, you know, they should remove this. They're untapped. As soon as it's our upkeep or whatever, we can foretell. So they've got to kill it on, like, right now. No creatures for them to take, but they get to see our hand. Thanks, bro. <laughs> I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried. Now we have Miscast accessible, we have Whirlwind Denial uh, accessible, and we can attack. Which may not be worth it for us. Let's hold the phone. Alright, we're a control deck. Let's not... We'll kill them with sharks, not a 2-3 Dream Devourer. <laughs> right? Fable Passage gets stacked. That's their fourth land. Liliana definitely deserves the denial. That also uses all of their mana. Uh, easy block for us. You know, I think we just take it and hold up miscast. Right? Take out Valky. No attacks. And then we get into their hand, which is really nice. So anything they don't want us to take, uh, you know, of course, that's non-creature. We're going to get to snag. So they have to foretell it. Miscast on the Doom Scar to keep the Devourer alive. You know, I don't think it's super relevant, but it's a thing. And then we get in their hand here. Really? Get rid of the meme card, I guess.
We foretell the denial. We can take our attack. We know this. And we have to hold up that counterspell on um, what would be their Planeswalker. going to take our dream devourer and then they can at some point use it we have to give it to them though it sucks but gulp nice. we shall pray our turn getting rid of their graveyard is a thing right that's not the worst or tell and then we're still holding up the removal next <laughs> um You know, I think we can just push in. Soul Shatter gets us. Soul Shatter gets us. Right, I'm not gonna counter anything that's not that Tibalt Planeswalker. They have five. They do need seven, so we're safe a little bit. But they're gonna foretell it here. They didn't do it, or? I don't even know. Oh, they didn't do X equals two? Was that it? But now they don't have any mana for it. Pass our turn. Use three mana instead of two. And this is that way forever now, eh? Not just till the end of turn. Can we see the original? Yeah, it just stays that way. Which is pretty cool. So, obviously, that was their Tibalt. Now they can cast it for five. Yep, yeah, four damage is what it is. Let's take the draw. We also get to scry two from Snowlands. Both of those are great finds. Vantress in play. We have plenty of counter spells open. And Graven Lore. So let's pass it. The Devourer can only toss over so many cards, right? Let's see how this uh, unfolds here. They do go over. They must not be finding the land, but they had six, but they know we have counters, is the thing. Take the damage, that's fine. Let's take our scry. There's no creatures, they have like a control deck with Tibalt. Just looking for more anti Tibalt stuff.
We can play our Devourer. And then we still have both of our Whirlwinds uh, available. We could have even tossed one over. We should have tossed this one over. Whoops. Right, because we could have used the, the black mana to do it. That's fine, though. It's not a good counter, but it did happen. I'm pushing over again, which is fine. Easy block. I want to play this as Cosmia. But let's toss it over. Let's toss this over as well. Two lands in hand, 14 life. We lose our Devourer, which is fine. So if we don't counter, we have our lore open still, which is nice. Uh, I'm assuming there's a counter spell here though. Take the two. Alright, we'll take the draw. That's good news for us. No scry, but, you know, that's fine. It's a good draw! So, Cosmia in play for one. Hopefully there's not another Soul Shatter. They probably do. But we're drawing it out. And then the land in. Oh, at the beginning of your upkeep. You fool. I thought it was always when the land entered. <laughs> That's fine. That means it's got to be in play regardless. It's probably just going to get removed. Ending our turn. You know, I think we're in a position now that uh, we can just kind of go ahead and win the game. Yep, they can have it. We're going to have 9 mana available, so we can actually <laughs> use Ugin's Minus and hold up a Whirlwind Denial to protect it, which is, you know, about the goofiest thing I've ever done. Gulp. Let's take our Scry. Hit him with some of their own medicine. Wow, that kills Planeswalkers too, and we know that there's a Tybalt in there. We get minus four. Clears everything up. Our Devourer comes back to hand, which is nice. All right, we're going to be using that. Ending our turn. So much like the Whirlwind Denial gets cast for one, so does the Soul Shatter, uh, which is really nice. Let's counter Tybalt. Ugin goes up. Land in play. 
Devour over. Cycle this over. End our turn. Because we need to hold up that miscast. They've got a bunch of stuff still though, so we're not out of everything yet. Really? So they can self-sack that with uh, T-Grid. Right? With the Lantern. Yeah, Miscast saves us here against Soul Shatter. Protects us, which is awesome. They still lose life. Pass our turn. Barons gets mana put into it. Decline. Let's just hit home. We could foretell this for two more damage, hit them for eight. But. But. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's just flex to zero instead. Let's keep the shark in hand. You know, I want a flyer if something goes wrong here. They can only cast so many spells uh, as well. He's already at seven. The plus two is deadly. Real good. But they're foretelling over more. Our turn. We can take the plus. Do not ignore my draconic talents. We come over. We have to cycle this in case something happens. All right, that way we've got two attackers for lethal. Okay, that was good. Let's leave it, just wait. <clears throat> they could bring this back around. Actually, no, they can't cast anything. Nice. I mean, maybe they could get us. I don't know. <laughs> Treachery's blessing just bones them. Bloosh! Ugin, he's still broken. <laughs> we can't keep this. I mean, the lands, it's not good. And we're playing against rogues too, right? So we need to be all out right away. Why are we getting boned? Not good. <laughs> Not good. Mm, a little bit helpful. Yup. You do you, bro. Maybe they think we're rogues.
hold up our priority just for a second so they know we're doing it. Their turn. Thought Thief, everybody gets pushed up to the moon. Uh, and we're not even on our fourth land yet. Isn't that ridiculous? Like, we should be able to Extinction Event them next turn, but no. Right? Take 18 damage first. Right, we literally get hit <laughs> for 10 damage next turn. We can cycle the shark, stop some of the damage. If they have a counter spell, they win. If they bring Lurus over, they win. Hopefully this pulls their mana. Nimmil o'clock. That's rich. That's rich. If they counter this... Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. How are we supposed to beat that deck? Right? Yes, you can counter it, bro. This should be pretty easy. Oh, really? Did they just flash in on top of it? <laughs> right? So even with it, we're getting annihilated. That was the removal we needed off the top. Take our scry. Doesn't matter because they mill it. So that can stay there. I'm going to call him a gnarled. Doesn't help that we flooded. Well, this is just what happened to us last time. We do find our way out of it with one mulligan. Keep six. They're probably a creature deck. Let's toss our charger for now. It's kind of like a later game thing. It's closer to our win condition than most things we want. Hello, good game. Seems we might be finding a decent matchup. They're on the play, though, of course, so it's always going to be harder for us. We pull another charger as well. really good. So basically anything this guy does, we win. Wow. 
why it used our black mana. I'll never know. I will truly never know why it just used our black source of mana when we want to hold this up and cast it next turn. Auto tapping failure. Bleep, bloop, blop. Make sure you're manually tapping when you foretell. It's, that's not okay. That's a little ridiculous. Pass our turn. Okay. They don't drop a Doom on us, do they? Classy. Okay. So we're probably going to remove Elset here. Just waiting. We get the block in. They sack Elsad. Which makes the zombies, which is good, right? Not bad. We know we can't hard cast Shark Typhoon because binding. Everything must go. It's sad, but I think it's our best play. Just kind of maybe square things up again for us. The Yorion bounce stuff, that would make me sad. Yorion's an odd though, so we wouldn't have gotten it. Let's pass our turn. We cycle the shark and we protect it with miscast. They just take the scry. One to the top, one to the bottom. Death touch, then it fizzles. So it costs two, we have six, so we can cycle it for three. That leaves us a miscast open to protect it. Or we don't protect it, we go all in. We're gonna save miscast for later. It's gonna come in handy, I don't know where but I don't think it's here. Maybe we get burned, but a 4-4 shark, I don't know if that's worth, like, you know, protecting with your life. Waiting on our opponent to confirm. Which means they must just have uh, another omen, right? Like something with flash. Kept it at three, it could dodge giant killer too. We'll see though. I mean, it's their rope. Maybe that's how upset they are to see Shark Typhoon. They're just like, I'm out. <laughs> Somehow I doubt it though. Right? Um, is their timer going? Which is fine. They used a timeout, which is okay. move ourselves in front 
Basically tries to stream snipe us. <laughs> uh, who knows what that last card is, bro? I should always just be in front of my hand. Right? I'm the avatar. Yes. <laughs> we'll let them know that there's a blue card there. We just won't show them which one it is. <laughs> or maybe they're playing on mobile and their phone melted. Actually, my phone didn't get that warm. I played it for a while and my phone was totally fine. Um, like I must have played for an hour and a half and it wasn't even warm. So I think that's debunked, right? Um, we're really getting roped here. Mobile shutdown, they got a phone call or something, right? Alrighty. You guys seen what we picked up, didn't you? Oh, they're definitely gone, though. Yeah. I mean, I'll take a win. A win's a win's a win. They hit us with binding. It only took a shark to shut down their phone. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> what a way to win a match. I mean, I'll take it. Every win is a win. Closer to Mythic, right? Closer to ranking up, no matter what rank you are. Easy, peasy, lemon, squeezy. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Share the channel to your friends. Download Magic the Gathering Arena Assistant for free. Check out our 500,000 gem giveaway. 100 one-on-one -on -one sessions with myself. Free cash prize monthly tournaments. The list goes on. You can support financially on Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube. Next match. Going first, the land looks too light to keep. I say toss it. This looks a lot better. Keep six. Toss our only removal spell. Toss the lantern for now. We'll play it later. Land is good. Let's just do Devourer right now. There's no protection, so, you know, why bluff it? Maya's in the house. While we wait on our opponent. Where were you a few minutes ago, Maya? They're not going into our hand with those colors. So let's do the uh, Graven Lore first. Because that's actually going to help us draw lands. Whereas if we do Ugin, you know, the cost reduction is there for later, but that's not helping us draw lands if we break. My opponent's turn just consists of Maya. Hey, Maya, what are you doing? She's in the foam. Stop it, Maya. Hey, don't do that. Don't do that. Why not? <laughs> don't tell me what I can and cannot do. I guess we just go crazy about it, don't we? Right, Maya? We just go crazy about it, don't we? Alright, that's our turn. We get an attack for four in. Four cat wheels worth of damage. Oh, let's just watch the cat. That's so much more entertaining. Right, Maya? I'm way better than magic. <laughs> get it, girl! Alright, we've got Temple of Epiphany in play. And then a foretell over. We push our lands. Oh, she's yelling at me. She says, put the camera back on me. <laughs> and we can... I guess foretell this over. Why not? All right, why not? We get the attack damage that way. All right. She's going to let us play finally. Ending our turn. And we're all set up here. Raven Lore is going to refill our hand. Only one snow, but whatever. It's a 60 card deck, so the scry is not super important. It's nice. Oh. Oh. I guess we'll just take the scry this way. 
they get the ability to use glimpse of the cosmos if they want here let's fry the sucker oh these are both great cards those can stay there that's amazing with dream devourer two of my favorite cards to play on top of dream devourer whirlwind and soul shatter both three mc single mana costs We get hit for two here. This is like a perfect matchup for us so far. I'm a little worried, but not overly. Narset should probably uh, most definitely be countered. That should be their turn. Just a glimpse. That's fine. Dream Devourer gets in again. I really want to use this Graven Lore, but we have to play it safe. Mm, that happened. Two mana left. We go in with the charger. Keep putting on pressure. Don't hit it. God of the Voyage. We believe in you. All we have up is a Soul Shatter. Raven Lore hits the turn after no matter what. Cry three. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Woof. Three to the top as well. I guess that just works out, doesn't it? Eight mana, though. And they wipe the field. Does anyone care about this giant? I guess I do a bit. Ashiok's pretty cool top deck. That'll keep us away from our Craven lore, I guess. So whenever they cast five or greater, they get to draw a bunch. They also get the scry three here, which is really good. Two to the top, because they just scry three, so many of those stay there. One goes to the bottom. They have four cards in hand. Unlimited mana, it would appear. Taking our Ashiok. We still sit with a 2-3 in play. Can we draw that 6 land? Oh, well, we need one of them. Oh, we don't have the two black sources. Shoot, skis. Foretell it over. No attacks. Oh. Oh. And now our stuff's more extensive. Shoot! Shoot, 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 shoot. This is bad, actually. This is really bad. But I'll fight if I must. That Elspeth. Messed us up big time. Miscast is amazing. You know, you have to run it right now with uh, Tybalt, but 
when an enchantment comes down in play and you can't do anything about it, it's just like, ugh, where's my negate? We'll take the scry. This is uh, only two damage. There's no Calamity Bear in play. And we get rid of the Quakebringer uh, situation. Scry 2, Shark Typhoon stays. Land can stay too. We get the Exile. Not sure that's relevant at all for us. They take a Calamity Quakebringer. If they have a Calamity Bear in hand, that's going to be really bad. They've got Flings or something, maybe. This is really good for us. Unless they have a counter spell. Do. But we have a miscast on top of their neutralize. It does save us. Yes! They don't have enough mana. And it still hits. We take odds. We keep Narset down from an ultimate. We just got a giant off the top, I think. Bone Crusher. Two cards in hand. One's a land. They should have discarded that with Narset. Oh well. They have to immediately discard that, do they not? Oh, then you may discard a card. What am I thinking? Not a counter spell. We just do the shark and win. It hits. We kill the bone crusher. We kill Narset. Quake bringer into exile. That's great. Raven Lord's ready to draw us a full mitt. Good game. Yet another win in the tally. Uh, and that's Platinum 1. So this is a certified to get you to Platinum 1 at least. I'm sure we could get Diamond here. And uh, I think we're going to play a few more games, actually. We go first. Three lands. Clock. No, it's not bad. You need a regular island here. I guess the charger can go. We need a devourer before we find a charger. Right? And there it is. So that's quite nice. Pimir into a love struck beast, so probably just working towards an ultimatum. We don't really need the clock, but the ramp is still nice. Because the two Graven Lords, you know, they're such heavy draws that at this point, we might not even want to use them. We might just want to let the clock toss them back into our library. We'll see, though. Just playing slow. I mean, this is good. We can get into their hand and take their ultimatum. We can cycle the shark, block the beast.
mean, we could have cycled it for one. It doesn't matter. Let's just try to stop as much damage as we can. Cultivate, really good for them. Two lands, of course. Definitely building towards their ultimatum. Oh, good for them. <laughs> go big or go home, right? None of other, our other ugh, ugh, none of our other moves make sense anymore. The second one one allows the beast to attack regardless. So let's try to bank off this shark typhoon somehow. Maybe they've left, right? I'm not sure why. No, you can see them. They're still here. They're just not used to the midnight clock taking priority. Even though it flashes right on their screen. Wow. Nice, bro. So we need a wiper, that's it. Two mana available through the treasure as well. Wow. No wipe. None of those do anything for us here. Got some chump blockers. We need a wipe. Odd. Odd. We definitely need a wipe on odds. Where is our extinction event? Just digging for it. Just digging. Check our render time. It's almost done. Mine's not on our wheel. And my wrist is just in so much pain. Alright. That's fine. Oh my gosh. Maybe it's not fine. Nice. That's just like good game. Gulp. Nothing we pull fixes this situation. Especially not that. Not enough, is the thing. Woof. Woof. Alright, Demir Fortel worked very, very good. It's kind of crazy how some decks just click, and some decks don't. Like, it's like there's a missing thing. Some matches they do... But, for example, you know, this deck performed very, very well, uh, whereas our last deck, the Boros Knights, uh, you know, it didn't perform poorly, but it definitely didn't excel like this deck did. And, you know, I kind of find that that's what it's like to be an aggro player. You, yes, have a very nice chance of winning by turn four and turn five, but once you kind of grasp this concept of how the best of one meta functions, you can, you know, really engineer around that. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I prioritize a lot of my draw hands on Extinction Event 
Do I have Extinction Event? Can I cast it? If not, is there any more removal and draw in hand to help me survive and find it? Right? That's like my only question in best of one opening hands. Where's my Extinction Event? I need to drop this on turn four. Um, you know, even better now, we can drop it, uh, you know, for a reduced cost if we uh, foretell it, uh, which is pretty cool. So, you know, it's not like you can't play control in best of one. You just have to kind of realize the environment you're entering uh, into. So with that out of the way, I hope that helped you a little bit. Uh, I had a great time today. Obviously, we're always uh, smiling when we're winning, oddly enough. I really want to work on being happy uh, and grateful when we run into bad times as well. But it's so easy to get tilted, right? So, you know, turn that frown upside down, take a walk, grab some fresh air, and, uh, you know, make a new deck, maybe. Uh, check out some of my videos for inspiration, of course. Like, comment, subscribe to help support the channel. You can go above and beyond by supporting financially. I really do appreciate that. Twitch, Patreon, YouTube, and even by purchasing things through our Amazon link. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for making this a possibility for me. Uh, with that all out of the way, we'll see you in a, just a few seconds within the next video. Take care.